Well, good morning, and thank you for joining me on another wonderful Wednesday for our midweek devotion. Uh, Pastor Jeremy DePina coming to you, my Desert Foothills family, to be able to share the word of the day with you. Um, just a couple of nights ago, it was Monday, in fact, uh, I decided to be able to go out and uh, get a little bit of fresh air, get some exercise, and go running in my neighborhood. And so I went out, it was uh, approximately 8 o'clock when I left the house, and as I stepped outside the doors to be able to go uh, for a little run, and the wind was just uh, horrific. Uh, it was just pushing and pushing and blowing so hard. Uh, uh, just running through the neighborhood was even difficult at times because of so much uh, debris being pushed uh, upon me or even just the force being pushed upon me as I was trying to run in certain directions. Uh, the next day I saw quite a few trees that were down in the neighborhood, uh, some different branches. I saw even at our church we had a couple banners that had blown over. Unfortunately we got no rain, uh, but it was amazing to see just the mighty power of that wind. I'm sure you've seen it too at some point in your life. Uh, as I thought about that, there was a scripture verse that came to my mind that night and one that I thought I could share for our devotion for the day. Uh, it's in the book of Kings, and it comes from the book of Kings, and it's uh, 1 Kings chapter 19, and I'm going to begin today at verse 11. So 1 Kings 19, uh, verse 11. It says, The Lord said, uh, Go out and stand on the mountain. Now this is uh, Elijah that he's talking uh, to. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. For the Lord is about to pass by. Interesting, the Lord shares with Elijah that he almost introduces himself that he is about to come by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. Imagine that. I thought just a couple of these branches blowing down or trees being cast aside was amazing enough. Imagine a wind that it tears these mountains apart, that it shatters the rocks, but the Lord is not in this wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. Uh, I don't know if you've ever experienced an earthquake before. Uh, coming from California, uh, I've been in quite a few of them as a young child, and it's a very interesting experience, one that's hard to be able to describe unless you've felt one before, of the, of the earth actually trembling around you and having nowhere to be able to really flee to and nothing that you can do about it. Uh, almost no shelter that can be had. Uh, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire. Uh, most of us have seen uh, the horrendous fires that we can get uh, both uh, in my home state of California and also here in Arizona in the amount of just tremendous damage that they can cause and the heat. Uh, if you've ever been even close to uh, a large fire that it is put off. Uh, but it says, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. I wonder what that was like that Elijah uh, entertained that day with the Lord. This gentle whisper that comes. And when Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and he went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. And then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, they've torn down your altars, and they've put up prophets to death, uh, excuse me, put all of your prophets to death uh, by the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. Imagine what Elijah is facing at this particular time in his life. Uh, we didn't read about it uh, beforehand in this chapter, but Elijah, is he's on the run. He's trying to hide. He actually prays to God that his life will be taken. He's under such stress. And in this moment, the Lord comes to him, and he expels that upon God. Uh, God, they've literally killed all of your other prophets, They've put up uh, different statues, different idols. Uh, they're after me. They've promised, and they have, to be able to kill him. 
we always think that the times that we live in are, are so terrible, and at times they are. Think about this moment in Elijah's life. He is the only prophet left. All the other ones have been killed. And now he, he's looking for some sign for the Lord to be able to once again show his power that he is God and to come and to be able to save him. This mighty wind comes and it tears apart those mountains, uh, but God is not there. This huge earthquake happens and the Lord is not in the earthquake. A great fire comes out of nowhere and the Lord is not in the fire. But all of a sudden there's this gentle whisper and we hear the voice of the Lord. He appears to Elijah to be able to say, what are you doing here? Uh, what's going on? What can I do for you? The Lord listens to Elijah. He protects him and he empowers and he strengthens him. You know, today you may be looking for some sign from the Lord. Uh, people of all generations and of all times have called upon the Lord, God, please show us uh, some type of sign. Then I will trust. Then I will know. And make it miraculous, God. Make it some type of miracle. Be in the mighty wind. Be in the earthquake. Be in the fire. But what if God today is in a mighty, quiet whisper that is roaring in your heart? One that maybe uh, we don't always uh, think about, maybe one that we don't always see, but one that comes down upon us to be able to give us comfort and a promise of protection. Uh, I don't know about you, but when I think about that uh, little whisper of the Lord that comes upon me, I think about his word that he gives to us. Uh, I always want these signs around us. Uh, we always want things to be able to go uh, well in our lives, not even in a, a selfish manner, just great for the church or great for the Lord's ministry. Do big things, we thank God, but at times maybe God just wants to do small things, small things that have big impacts within his world. And so today, as all of us come to our Lord in a time of prayer and call upon him, what is the whisper that he is placing upon your heart today? What is he sharing with you? What is he giving to you? What is he calling you to? Take a moment now and uh, say a prayer to our Lord. Ask him to place this whisper upon your ears that you by his spirit may respond to this good and great work that he has yet to perform in you. I promise he will always protect you. He will always guide you and he will always be there introducing himself, this great and wonderful God that is our creator, our sustainer, and of course our redeemer. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.